On Halloween Day, October 31st, 2019, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a resolution to formally launch an impeachment inquiry into President Donald J. Trump. House Resolution 660. While a number of House investigations into the President were already well underway, this measure formalized them as part of an official impeachment inquiry, and lays out a process leading up to a potential impeachment vote on the floor of the House. In this video, I'll explain what the resolution sets up procedurally for the Trump impeachment inquiry, break down what the Constitution has to say about impeachment, and talk about what happens if the president is indeed impeached. While impeachment processes do have a degree of unpredictability, this should hopefully serve to give some sense of an answer to the question, what happens next? Let's begin with the Constitution. While it is the ultimate authority when it comes to impeachment, you may be surprised by how little the founding document actually has to say about the process. There's essentially just six things the Constitution says about impeachment. Number one, impeachment trials are an exception to the normal rule of trial by jury. As it states in Article 2, Section 3, the trial of all crimes, except in cases of impeachment, shall be by jury. Number two, while the president has the general power to overrule convictions through pardons, that's not the case when it comes to impeachment. Article 2, Section 2 says, The president shall have power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. Number three, a president and other officials can be removed from office when they are impeached for and convicted of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Article 2, Section 4. While treason and bribery are fairly clear, high crimes and misdemeanors is a rather vague phrase. Perhaps the most influential document in interpreting what exactly qualifies is a 1974 report by the House Judiciary Committee called Constitutional Grounds for a Presidential Impeachment. This document cites founding fathers, especially Madison, in arguing that these do not need to be illegal acts, but a broader scope of misdeeds that might undermine U.S. interests or the Constitution. The report also categorizes all previous American impeachments as stemming from conduct that falls into one of these three categories, exceeding the constitutional bounds of the powers of the office and derogation of the powers of another branch of government, behaving in a manner grossly incompatible with the proper function and purpose of the office, and employing the power of the office for an improper purpose or for personal gain. Number four, impeachment is a process for the House. The House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment, Article 1, Section 2. Number five, convictions on impeachment charges happen in the Senate. As Article 1, Section 3 lays out, the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. And finally, number six, the consequences of impeachment convictions is limited to being removed and barred from office. Other penalties for the same misdeeds go through the normal judicial process. This is also laid out in Article 1, Section 3. Judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal from office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. But the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to the law. So that's basically it. That's all the guidance the Constitution provides. Historical precedent also provides some guidance, but impeachment proceedings can proceed in a number of ways within this constitutional framework. The next steps for the impeachment of Donald Trump were laid out by House Resolution 660, which just passed. The first thing you should know about House Resolution 660 is that it is a resolution, not a bill being passed into law. Instead, it merely affirms a commitment for the House of Representatives and lays out a process it intends to follow. This resolution was introduced by Democratic Representative James McGovern on October 29th, 2019, and passed on October 31st with a vote of 232 to 196. 
Every House Republican voted against the measure, with all but two Democrats, Jeff Van Drew and Colin Peterson, voting for it. Former Republican Justin Amash also supported the resolution. The resolution's central purpose is to lay out how the impeachment inquiry will proceed from here. Although the text leaves plenty of things unspecified, and explicitly authorizes the Judiciary Committee to add additional procedures. But essentially, each of the four sections of the resolution lay out one step of the process. Step one, several committees are directed to continue their ongoing investigations into Donald Trump as part of what now constitutes a formal inquiry into whether the House of Representatives should impeach the president. These committees include the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and the Committees on Financial Services, Foreign Affairs, the Judiciary, Oversight and Reform, and Ways and Means Committees. Step 2. The Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence takes control of the process, with its chair, currently Democrat Adam Schiff, leading public hearings. Witnesses may be questioned for up to 90 minutes, with that time divided evenly between the committee chair, again Adam Schiff, and the ranking minority member, Republican Devin Nunez. The ranking minority member can also introduce witnesses or documentary evidence. The Intelligence Committee also has the right to release transcripts of depositions taken in private. Then in consultation with the chair of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Elliot Engel, and the chair of the Committee on Oversight and Reform, now Carolyn Maloney, who took over from Elijah Cummings, RIP, the chair of the Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, will prepare a report for the Judiciary Committee. The report would detail the committee's findings and recommendations and would be publicly available. Step three, all the records pertinent to the impeachment investigations are transmitted to the Judiciary Committee, which will take over the process from here. That committee, by the way, is headed up by Democrat Jerry Nadler, and its ranking minority member is Republican Doug Collins. Step four, the Committee on the Judiciary will conduct proceedings relating to the impeachment inquiry and is is authorized to add additional procedures as it deems necessary. The president and his lawyers are invited to participate. The ranking minority member is invited to bring new witnesses, conduct questioning, and introduce documentary evidence. Finally, the judiciary will conclude this process by introducing whatever resolutions, recommendations, or articles of impeachment that it deems proper. So ultimately, following historical precedent, the Judiciary Committee will decide whether impeachment charges make it to the floor. If articles of impeachment make it out of committee, the House of Representatives as a whole will vote on whatever articles of impeachment are recommended by the Judiciary Committee. A simple majority will be all it takes to impeach the president. So what if the president is impeached? A president getting impeached, of course, means very little in and of itself. After being impeached, a president then faces a trial in the Senate, often prosecuted by members appointed by the House, typically from the Judiciary Committee. Conviction requires a two-thirds majority vote by the Senate. If convicted, the president can be removed from office and or barred from holding office in the future, although the president can also be impeached without any penalties being levied. With the Republican Party controlling the Senate at the moment, it seems highly unlikely that an impeached Donald Trump would be removed from office. But I would caution you to not make too many assumptions about the impeachment process. Beyond the Constitution's rules, the only consistent thing about impeachment seems to be that it's unpredictable. I have impeached myself. There have been efforts made to impeach every president since Ronald Reagan, though these efforts typically do not make it out of committee. After three articles of impeachment made it to the floor of the House of Representatives, Richard Nixon prevented the impeachment process from proceeding any further along by resigning the presidency. Only two American presidents have ever been impeached by the House, Bill Clinton and Andrew Johnson, and neither were removed from office, as they were acquitted by the Senate. So ironically, while the president who left office because of an impeachment inquiry was never impeached, the two presidents who were impeached were never removed from office. Despite the fact that you will often hear that impeachment is a political process, in the case of Johnson, a number of Republican senators broke party lines to join the Democrats in voting not guilty. There were in fact more Republicans voting against impeachment than Democrats, 10 and 9 respectively, and had any of those 19 votes gone the other way, Johnson would have become the first and so far only president to be impeached by the House and convicted by the Senate. Bill Clinton too received acquittal votes from Republicans, though the vote largely followed party lines in his case. Many have argued that impeachment is advantageous to a president, citing Bill Clinton's approval numbers. While his first term average job approval rating, according to Gallup, 
was 50%. His approval shot up to 69% in early 1998, around the time he denied having relations with that woman in a sworn deposition. And when he was impeached in the House at the end of that year, his approval hit an all-time high of 77%. At the same time, while accurate scientific approval polling was not around at the time, Andrew Johnson likely did not experience a boon to his popularity when he was being impeached. After his impeachment, despite being a sitting president, Johnson came in fourth place at the 1868 Democratic National Convention. Of course, that was a very different time in America and a very different Democratic Party. The slogan for the convention was, this is a white man's country, let white men rule. The white man the DNC chose to rule was former New York Governor Horatio Seymour, who would go on to be walloped by liberal Republican Ulysses S. Grant. So as we've seen, while impeachment is supposed to be and is quite rare, the beginnings of an impeachment process have happened to literally every president since Reagan. While impeachment is designed to remove a president from office, an impeached president has never been removed because of it, though a non-impeached president did resign because of impeachment proceedings. Impeachment proceedings are often described as a political process, despite the fact that they mimic legal proceedings, and senators have broke ranks to vote against their own party's position after an impeachment trial. Impeachment is also said to raise the popularity of a president despite the fact that it is intended to be a grave dishonor, and there is only one example of a president's popularity spiking from an impeachment process. In a word, impeachment is rare, bizarre, and unpredictable. The procedures surrounding it are largely improvised within the vague constraints of the Constitution and guided by scant historical precedent. The implications of impeachment can be either straightforward or counterintuitive, and the limited historical record regarding it is contradictory offering little in the way of guidance for reasonable speculation about the future. So I would advise you to regard as either a fool or a liar anyone who's speaking about Trump's impeachment inquiry tells you they can give you a clear, specific answer to the question, what happens next? <laughs>